Good morning. This is our midweek Bible study, and we're back in the book of Romans, chapter 5. And uh, let's go to prayer. Uh, this first portion of this chapter is really good because it, it talks about faith as victory, or faith triumphs over tribulation, over troubles, or whatever, as long as our faith, our trust is in the Lord. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus, I pray that this message today would be encouragement to those that are listening. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would deliver it in power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not, not, not by the intellect of man or by the frailty of man, but by, by your Spirit, says the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have peace with God, we're reconciled to God, and we have peace because we're, our trust is in the Lord, not in the things of this world. Through whom also we have access by faith into, the, into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Isn't that, isn't that something? I mean, to say we glory in tribulation, we glory in trials and to, in difficulties and troubles, we glory. That tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. And it, that's, that, is, that is so contrary to the natural mind. We, uh, in the natural mind, we think, how could trouble possibly produce hope? But in, in the spirit realm, once we know the Lord Jesus Christ and we walk according to the spirit, not according to the natural, according to the flesh, tribulation produces perseverance, endurance. Uh, perseverance produces character, changes the way uh, your whole character, your makeup, and character produces hope. It says, now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And so this is, this is so important. Uh, hope does not disappoint, disappoint. Our hope is in the Lord, not in our abilities, not in the things of this world, not in our government, not in anything natural. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Holy Spirit has confirmed this, made it real to us once we put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is our place. He is, a, he, is, he is our position, our standing, our hope, our, our security, our rock. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, you know, it, it makes it real clear here. Uh, nobody would die for an ungodly person. Some might consider uh, giving their life to, for a good person, and that happens a lot on the, in the battlefields. People will lay down their life to save a friend. But Christ, uh, God, while we were still sinners, sent Christ to die for us and to save us and give us eternal life. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. So just, we're justified by the blood of Jesus. That means we are made, once you, once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are counted just as if you had never sinned. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So we were saved. He died for us while we were enemies of God. We were still sinning. We, we, had, we weren't living a godly life. We had not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He, had, he died for us while we were still sinning. And not only that, but we also, we, also reckon, we, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And reconciliation is being made right with God. We are, we are brought back into right position before God. We were, de, we were separated from God by sin, and now through Christ, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us, we're now reconciled to God. We're made, made right with God. 
And then in this portion of scripture, the apostle uh, draws the comparison between death, mankind came into sin and death through Adam and life in Christ. He, he compares Adam and Christ. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin, thus death spread to all men and, be, and became uh, and, and, and it spread to all men because all sin. And it, we, even though we didn't all commit the same exact act as Adam, Adam being the federal head, the beginning of mankind, the federal head of, of humanity, because of his sin, we're all marked with sin. Uh, it says, because, and because all sin, uh, we're counted just as if we sin, even though we didn't commit the same sin Adam sinned. For until the law... Uh, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is the type of him who was to come. So Adam, <clears throat> through Adam, mankind was given life, but through Adam's sin, all of mankind was marked with death, and, and uh, marked with sin and death. But there, uh, it's, it's, it says, um, but, the, but the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's sin, sin or one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace of the, of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from, the, from one offense resulted in, the, in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For, for if, if by one man's offense death reigned through the, through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So, uh, by the sin of Adam, and Adam is called uh, Adam is called the the first Adam, and Jesus called the second Adam. Through through the first Adam, mankind received life, but was marked with sin. And through the second Adam, Jesus, we receive eternal life. And I hope that that theologically, uh, that's how how it's uh, taught. But I hope that makes sense to you. So through the first Adam, we received physical life. Through the second Adam, we receive spiritual life and life eternal, life forever. And so uh, it says, righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, verse 18, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, and that, that man that's capitalized, Jesus, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man disobe disobedience, many one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Also by one man's obedience, many are made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, and where sin abounds, grace abound much more so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So uh, it's, no matter how much sin, and, and, and this is so important, before we close this message, it's so important that you understand no matter how much you have sinned, the grace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ abounds more covers that sin. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, a lot of people listen to gospel messages. They hear people talk about salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, and they think, well, I've sinned so much, I can never be made right with God. And you need to understand that the grace of God abounds far more than any sin you have ever committed. You need to understand that. 
Uh, I've known people, I've talked with people, and they, and they insist, uh, no, I've gone too far, I can't be forgiven. And the grace of God covers those sins. People need to understand, no matter what you, th what you think you've done that is so terrible, the grace of God and the blood of Jesus is able to cover that sin and make you white as snow as if you had never sinned, justified just as if you had never sinned. Uh, I, I appeal to you right now, if you're listening to this video and you're one of those that thinks, I, I've, I've been such a sinner, there's no way I can ever get right to God. Well, the truth of the matter is you can't make yourself clean. You can't get yourself right. You have to just come to Jesus just as you are and confess that you're a sinner and you need salvation. You need to be saved. When we talk about salvation, salvation is being saved from our sins, being saved from our sins. We can't fix ourselves. We can't make ourselves clean and get all ready and then come to God. That's not the way it works. We come just as we are. We, we come to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me clean. Make me whole that I might have eternal life and spend forever with you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. You know, uh, Jesus went to that cross, and this is, this is the love of God. Before you were ever born, before, I mean, this was 2,000 years ago, so before you were born, he knew you, and he went to that cross, and he died for your sins. He, he took care of it, and all you have to do is believe on him. It, salvation is so simple. People say, oh, you Christians, you, you make the... You make, you make heaven so simple. You make eternal life sound so simple. It is that simple. You don't have to go through uh, any kind of works. You don't have to go through any kind of special education, religious classes or anything of that sort. You simply need to confess to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm a sinner. Save me from my sins. Wash me clean. Make me whole. And I believe that you, Jesus, I believe that you went to that cross died for my sins, were buried in that tomb, and rose again on the third day to give me eternal life. His resurrection gives, his, 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 his sacrifice on the cross covers our sins. His resurrection uh, guarantees eternal life for those who believe. So we're going we're gonna to close in prayer right now. And chapter 6 is, is awesome. Just like this chapter, uh, chapter 6 is awesome and powerful. Uh, we are now dead to sin and alive to God. And so that's, a, that's an exciting message and powerful as well. Let's go to prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we come to you now. We thank you that uh, Adam sinned. Yes, Adam sinned and covered all of mankind with sin. And death entered in. Uh, Adam and Eve were not going to die. Uh, and, but because of sin, death entered in. But now, through the Lord Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ, we can have eternal life, not just life here on earth, but life forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that your, by your spirit, the hearts would be touched today, uh, moved upon. And Lord, we know that all the signs on the face of the earth right now are indicators that you're coming soon and i pray lord not only will people give their heart to you and believe on you but that the church will be busy sharing testifying telling people jesus is coming soon are you ready are you ready for the lord's return and lord i pray use us in this great end time harvest of souls in jesus name we pray amen god bless you uh, another message for this weekend and we'll, we'll have a special, very special message this weekend. God bless you.